us now. A great to welcome a woman who's written an interesting book, in-depth look at people who do a lot of writing, particularly memoirists. It's called Why We Write About Ourselves, 20 memoirists on why they expose themselves and others in the name of literature. We're joined today by uh, Meredith Moran from out in uh, California today. Meredith, good to talk with you. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. You're in one of the few parts of the country other than Florida that has, uh, hasn't had snow, I guess. <laughs> We're, we're lucky. Definitely no snow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an interesting kind of an idea for a book. Of, first of all, my, my only question, my first question, I guess, is what's the difference between a memoirist and a, somebody doing an autobiography? Is there a difference? There is a difference. It's fairly subtle, but um, auto, autobiography is more of a kind of factual recounting of a life, like I was born on this day, and then this happened, this happened, this happened. And it's usually thought to be pretty inclusive of you know, all the major events in a life. And it's a little bit more kind of academic, like something you would read in a college class, whereas memoir, more like a novel in that it's meant to be a really great reading experience, and um, it's up to the author whether she talks about her whole life or one incident in life or, you know, any part of life. It's all shaped by the author. It could be just maybe a year in a life or a certain experience exactly. rather than the entire life. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in in this book, there are some memoirists um, who wrote about specific things, like Kelly Corrigan wrote a book called The Middle Place, and it was about her having cancer at the same time that her father had cancer, and they were really close, and, you know, that whole experience, and they both survived, and how all that was, and um, let's see, Anne Lamott wrote about having... Well, first she wrote a book called Operating Instructions when her son was in the first year of his life, and then she wrote two more memoirs about her grandson <laughs> and her son. So, um, you know, sometimes it's that kind of a thing, and sometimes it's a very, um, a more general um, discussion of more normal life events, but just what the meaning of them are. In this book, you have 20 different uh, authors. Uh, how did you come up with that list? Uh, what was your process for doing that? I um, first started with writers, memoirists who are friends of mine, and therefore would <laughs> let me bend their arms with with their arms to be in the book. Yeah, and um, then once I had them, I was looking for a mix of. Uh, different racial backgrounds, different kinds of backgrounds, people who had written just memoir, people who had written novels and memoir, people whose books were made into movies, different ages and so on, different parts of the country. So I'm really very happy with the list we ended up with because I think most readers will find the book because someone is in the book who they have already read, and um, then maybe they'll be introduced to some other great writers they'll enjoy. What were they all pretty uh, open about when you interviewed them, uh, about why they uh, write uh, the way they do and what it's about? Or? Yeah, I was kind of amazed <laughs> at the things some of them told me. Um, <laughs> they were very open, and um, some of them told me things that I thought when... Um, when they went back, I gave them all a chance to reread their chapters and make sure that it was okay with them before we published it. And I was pretty sure some of them would read what they told me and say, "No way, I'm not going public with that." But they all they all let it all fly, so it's pretty pretty juicy. I guess we we'll just look at some of the notes. Uh, Sue Monk Kid said uh, uh, she didn't see it as a confessional booth, right? Right, right. Yes. I so mean, you, you don't tell you don't tell everything. <laughs> you don't tell every well. In her case, she says that yeah, and also that um, the way you craft the story, it's not just this and then this and then this. It's you know that she told me that she puts the same kind of care and thought into sort of making a plot for a memoir as she does for a novel. Uh, you have a section there on uh, all those talking about, I guess, be, facing criticism. I guess all people in uh, the business uh, face that, particularly when you, you put out a book. Uh, Ed, Edwidge, am I pronouncing right? Danticat said. Uh, Edwidge, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I guess he says when it's fiction, it's easier to accept criticism, but when it's a memoir, you're, you're, it's more personal, right? That's right, yes. And um, <clears throat> a lot of the writers in the book, um, Ayala Waldman, who wrote a piece about um, loving her husband more than she loved her kids, and she went on Oprah, and the women were practically throwing things at her, and, <laughs> you know, a lot of controversy. Pat Conroy, who wrote um, The Great Santini and Prince oh, sure. of Tides, it was made into a movie, yeah, he... Um, 
he actually lost his relationship with his sister because she didn't like what he wrote about their family. And, you know, his feeling about it is it's worth it because the book will last forever, whereas the relationship, you know, is a temporary thing. And I guess we're seeing more and more people, uh, not necessarily professional authors, but people in general writing about themselves just with the social media, right? I guess that people have an interest in, uh, in doing that nowadays, don't they? That's so true, yes. Yes, it's a lot more, you know, it, you could say it's a more open world, but at the same time we all know that we kind of, uh, you know, we manage our images online. So it's, you know, that whole phenomenon of Facebook envy and <laughs> people <laughs> looking at each other's lives online and thinking, oh, I wish I had a life like that. And then, of course, it's only one part of life that is being represented there. I mean, I do that myself, I'm sure <laughs> most people do, you know. <laughs> you don't. You don't put it online when you do something really stupid. You know? no, no. Or now, of all the people, the twenty people in this book, when you talk to them, anything kind of stand out? Maybe that you didn't expect that they would tell you. Well, um, yes, honestly, Pat Conroy's story about losing his sister about and how sister, his family yeah. reacted—that was pretty intense. Yeah. And um, Darren Strauss wrote uh, the first sentence of his of his book was. Uh, half a life ago, I killed a girl, and that was about wow. when he was a teenager behind the wheel of a car, and he um, had an accident and accidentally killed his one of his close friends. And, you know, so he goes back and really talks about what happened there and how he tried to live without telling the story. Edmund White is a an elderly gay writer who's been writing about gay things, gay, his gay life for, you know, 50 years. And it was really touching to hear him talk about the difference between acceptance now and acceptance even 10 years ago. Yeah, I would think uh, 50 years ago that was uh, shocking stuff oh, yeah. to, to admit, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I guess it's in a sense it's cathartic, right? I mean, you, you write, you've written a memoir yourself to, to write uh, things like that. I guess it helps you, doesn't it, to do that? Get it on you know, it's painful. It's painful sometimes and also helpful, yes, both. Um, I think it's it, that's one of the biggest challenges of writing a memoir is that, you know, when maybe it's really good for me to talk for 50 pages about, you know, one time in my childhood, but um, for the reader, it might be better if I can condense the lessons of that or the emotions of that into one page. And so that's really the struggle is to, you know, to figure out how to write in such a way that it's not mostly cathartic for the writer, but more informative or, or moving to the reader. Well, it's an interesting book. Again, 20 different uh, authors uh, that uh, Meredith Moran interviewed. It's called Why We Write About Ourselves, and it just came out, uh, I believe, this week, published by Penguin. Do you have a website, Meredith? People can get more information on the book. I do. It's MeredithMaran.com, M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H-M-A-R-A-N. Great. Well, pleasure talking to you. Great idea for a book, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Take care. Make romance. It might break your heart, but if you think that time will change your ways, don't wait too long. Don't wait. Mm. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America, isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.